good idea for Princess Celestia to nominate someone as Neuronic's Twilight the political office. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, man? <laughs> Who are you going with that? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, zero? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> because she gets tardy! Next question! You in the middle with your hand on the black t-shirt. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hey, I this one be the um, first suggestion because of all the times where Harley had to deal with the with the Joker, might I suggest somebody else for it to be with Harley? Deadpool. <laughs> Could be a popular choice. Uh, next. Spike. Um, Stand up. Show everybody your spike. <laughs> Played both uh, both Batgirl and Harley Quinn. Do you find it difficult to move between the hero and the villain roles? You think you have identity crisis? <laughs> <laughs> it's not really difficult because just as any character, after I create them, they live in my head, and when it's time to play, they come down, and they're totally separate entities. But it was a huge thrill to walk into Harley's shoes because, as you know, years ago I played Batgirl alongside of Arlene Sorkin with Mark Hamill and Kevin Conroy, and I think it's just such an honor to be part of that legacy anyway, but it's not challenging, it's just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, you. Yes. Uh, what are you going to be doing after, like, you, since, you're doing, since you're already finished with the back of Justice League, what are you going to be doing next? Well, right now I'm still working on um, Fairly Odd Parents, yeah. and, um, Ben 10, the Omniverse series, and what else am I doing? I work every single day, but if you ask me, I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> um, every, pretty much every other day, I have to, in my little home studio, say, coming up next on the Bad Girls Club. Um, but you didn't know that, did you? <coughs> did you guys get the Bad Girls Club up here? No. It's a really hilarious show where girls are just on TV to look bad. <laughs> There's no prize. They just want to be like the worst behaved woman. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah. <clears throat> uh, who would win in a battle? Twilight Sparkle or Raven from Teen Titans? You decide. <laughs> Ace, who would win in a battle? Raven or Twilight Sparkle? Try <laughs> <laughs> using the voice. Come on, birthday boy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Raven. <laughs> We'll go with red. <laughs> uh, yellow. Brim. That's you. You have yellow on your brim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Surprise. <laughs> Could you please tell us the story of like the worst, most uncomfortable voice acting uh, experience you've ever had? Um, there have been a few. One was there was a little girl in the studio with us. I hope she hasn't found the internet and sees me telling the story. Um, and she had to go to the bathroom and she didn't know that you could leave. <laughs> and so in the middle of recording, everyone's got some lines in a, and she just interrupts and goes, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And everyone looked at where she was. She was peeing on the floor. <laughs> We're thinking, you can go to the bathroom over there. But that's probably worse. I did have someone throw up in a studio once, too. It's kind of gross. Uh, yes? Hmm, that's a tough one. I've already had such a... Okay, Aiden. Aiden. I'll, I'll work with Aiden. <laughs> Aiden and Carol. That's my cousin Carol. She got no legs and she still came to see me. <laughs> I did a movie with all my friends. Oh, uh, yes. There could be. What are you talking about? Um, my, I, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I let my kids see Family Guy, but that's where I draw the line. They haven't seen Drawn Together, but one day they will. <laughs> He's telling me that sometimes you watch a South Park, you're in big trouble. Um, I, I don't know what to say. They're both like so important to me as an actress because they're so fun and there's such a difference. And I remember one time 
My mother-in-law came to visit and I took her to a taping of the Rugrats and then I took her to a table read for Drawn Together. And I said, just so you know, this isn't the Rugrats. <laughs> I hope that, um, that they wait till they're older to see Drawn Together and then I won't have to say anything. Uh, yes, yes. Um, so you said that uh, when you create a character, it lives inside your brain. Um, you don't want to be in there. <laughs> crazy, crazy place. And to what extent do they become um, a part of your psyche? Do they slip out in everyday life? Or yes. is that not everything that happens? Oh, yes. You should go shopping with us. <laughs> <laughs> I always have a cuckoo voice coming out, but sometimes they like, it's easy to get things you want that way. Like, it's always nice to go, can I please? The money that I like you back, then give me my money, right? <laughs> I just use it. And whenever I'm with my British friends, I'm British. When I'm with my black friends and the sister, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't explain it. It drives my kids crazy. Like, mom, stop with the Indian boys. I'm like, that's my friend, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> You're Canadian. How did you get started in Hollywood? Did you have a role that they invited you to go down for? They don't really send invitation cards. <laughs> hey, here's Hollywood. Um, come visit us. No, you know, I knew when I was five years old that I wanted to be an actress, and because there's so many amazing, wonderful opportunities for Canadian actors here, I'm sure there are a few in this audience, and take those opportunities. Um, there's tons of production, American production, that happens in Canada. So um, after I sort of felt like I did everything I could do here, I moved on. Um, I, I always, I just gonna sound silly, but I always wanted to be in a movie of the week. <laughs> and so like when I got to do Sabrina, I was like, okay, that's cool. Um, and then a Disney movie, and I got to play her daughter in The Mermaid, and I was like, okay, I could die tomorrow, that's fine. <laughs> um, so it was just more for different opportunities, but having the extensive resume that I had in Canada was very helpful when I got to Los Angeles, because I just wasn't someone saying, hey, I want to be an actress. I already had a really wonderful resume that I built in Canada, which I think is such a great place to start, because there's really no one like Canadians. They're just such warm, lovely, amazing. <laughs> in LA and Jane and Carol come to visit us and my husband's a New Yorker and she's like, it's so funny, whenever your relatives come, they're always so sweet. And I'm like, that's Canadians for you. The New York Jews, not so sweet. The Canadians. <laughs> so yeah, they're just good peeps. I'm very grateful to have started here. Yes, you? Can you, can you talk as Harley Quinn and tell us how she really feels about the Joker? He's my button. He could go a little easier on me sometimes, sweetie. But I love him. <laughs> um, I know you did a small role in Sailor Moon, and I, I know you don't remember who you did. <laughs> See, they know, she already knows. You didn't even have to ask me the question because you already know my answer. Yeah, but the thing is, I was wondering if um, you could ask your agent. <laughs> I, I could try. I, I, I just put it on your site when you know. When I know, I'll get back to you on that. It's bubbles. Show your octi to everybody. Good day, octi, she made. Oh. Oh. Weird to talk to. I don't know. Harley would be fun to watch. <laughs> Stop making me choose. You're my children. Yes. Maybe. Did you like Equestria Girls? You might be the only one in the room. Did anyone else in the room like Equestria Girls? Girls, and I really love Lesson Zero. Those are like my top three. <laughs> you? Thank you. Yeah. So, what is, who's your favorite character to voice out of all? Again? <laughs> 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 um, more than once. 
Well, I always say that my favorite job I ever got to do was Melody in The Mermaid because I fangirl out to Jodie Benson. So get to get to play her daughter and look at her when I was singing was completely surreal. Like I actually started to cry when I met her. Aww. What? Oh. For a moment, all of me is alive and at home in the sea. I'm swirling and twirling so graceful and grand, not stubbing my toes, getting stuck in the sand. For a moment, I can feel all the dreams I've been dreaming are real. Wish my mother could hear it, the sea is my song. For a moment, just a moment, I belong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe. Um, that person with the black thing on their hand. Yeah. Okay. What kind of uh, advice do you give to a uh, aspiring actor? Don't steal my jobs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I get asked that question at every panel, and I always say that it's really important to take as many acting classes as you can. Um, scene study especially improv. Improv classes are fun no matter what your profession and they just help you open up and because a lot of times you'll be in the studio and they'll say can you give us you know a cheerleader or someone from Texas or a little boy or whatever and you just have to be kind of organic and free to play and that kind of opens you up to that and then if you do have a local um, place that teaches great voiceover you can do that and get some studio time and feel what that feels like and we have a course online called voice stars with a z.com and um that kind of teaches you everything about the business and then when you feel really ready, you make a demo tape and then you submit it to your top you know, local agents. You can always check the local union office to see who they recommend and then submit it. But don't do your tape until you're really ready because they're like $1,000 or I've, I've seen like $2,000 for a demo. I mean, they shouldn't be that much, I think, but they can be. So just make sure you're really ready. How old is Twilight Sparkle, and how do pony ears translate to human ears? <laughs> <laughs> she left already. Did you see her dancing around? Um, I guess if, I, I don't know what they say in the show. In my head, she's a teenager. When I play her, I feel like she's 15 or something like that. I don't know how pony ears just stop asking those questions. <laughs> You must have 47 voices. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's not really a standard, but certainly the people that are more versatile work more because they pay you a scale rate, which is like a set rate from the union, for up to three characters. So certainly a director is going to hire some one person that can give them three over someone that can only do one voice. So there is no real number, but the more you can do, the better. For sure. Yes, you. Yeah. Um, what can you tell us about season four of My Little Pony Freshman's Magic? Oh, That's yeah. very cute. <laughs> 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 um, you right there. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Actually, this one would be to ask. Uh, ever since when you played as Riku in Final Fantasy X oh. and X-2, oh. right? Are you uh, familiar that uh, when you said the line monkey that became a big internet meme thanks to the Spoonie experiment? No. <laughs> the internet scares me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's that? Okay. <laughs> We did try like sparkle at the drive-thru. Like I had no idea. I wanted my toy. Because <laughs> we don't eat McDonald's, but they have really cool toys. And we went to the drive-thru like, hi, this is Twilight Sparkle. I like my toy. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> Do you know Twilight Sparkle is? No. <laughs> I, well, I wouldn't have any needs because I'm a vegetarian. I think she'd just like to go in for her toy. <laughs> Probably. <I> mean, <laughs> Um, do you ever, like, 
accidentally use the wrong voice when you're doing voice acting? Does that ever happen? No. The only time that we could get confused is, is when you would do an audition, sometimes you give them a few different choices and then you don't know what they've picked. But on the first day of a session, they'll play wh which one they've picked. And then once it's established, you just don't confuse them. Can't explain why. Yes. Uh, can you explain the process you go through when you have to act by yourself? And could Rob Paulson get more of the Milo Cohen cast on his Talking Tunes podcast? It's a little challenging because everyone else is in Vancouver and Rob and I are in LA. So that's probably why that hasn't happened yet. Um, and he likes to come over and, and be very, you know, one on one with you. So maybe if he does a con in Vancouver or something like that. But I can certainly suggest it to him. What was the other question? How do you approach acting by yourself? Like, since you do so much great ensemble work, like for my French Biz Magic, you have to record by yourself. Oh, yeah. I mean, of course, it's, it's better to play off the other actors because if someone says something, you can either mock them or respond to them. But, <laughs> or say nice acting. But, um, <laughs> Because I can't, um, it's a little more challenging, but for me, whenever I'm doing a character, I really imagine all the moments in my head, which is why like in the Rugrats tapings, my scripts were always soaking wet, because the lines would be like, baby Dill sucks his thumb, grabs a toy, and throws up. So they're like, yay! And that's what So we kind of get into the character, and then those moments sort of happen organically. special you know uh, Laura and I have been friends since Powerpuff Girls and John I met at a convention like this one and he didn't know what a brony was and I had a brony panel and I just introduced myself because I had been a fan of his and he's like oh you're Tara Strong I'm like hey how did you know me he's like tell me about the bronies and so I explained to him a little bit about the fandom and I said you should come to my panel he's like oh no no like yeah you should come, surprise him. So it was about a little bit bigger than this room and he was hiding in the back and someone asked the Discord question. And I said, wow, that's interesting because he might be here. And he walked up and the crowd went nuts. <laughs> and then he was on stage like, oh, these are the bronies. <laughs> and I think because he had seen so much negative um, feedback about them that he really, it was his idea to honor that fandom in a true light of what they really are. And when he suggested it to me, of course I was like, of course I'll do that. And Lauren, of course, was thrilled to be a part of that, too. And, you know, filming it was fun and just getting the reaction from the fans. Did you see the documentary? It was just such a beautiful experience. And I loved surprising the army bronies. I love my army bronies. For those of you who hadn't seen the film, there was supposed to be a lunch with, like, a handful of army bronies. And I was surprising them with my slap bracelets. And there were 60. <laughs> so the moment was really special when I walked in. And they were just, oh my gosh, they're all so cute. So cute. Quite possible. Over there? Um, <laughs> no, thank you. Aiden, would you like Pop Tart? Yeah? Yeah, birthday boy wants Pop Tart. <laughs> about anything on camera that's inappropriate, which I wouldn't do, which I've been asked to do. Um, you know, sometimes like, well, it's just a little bit of nudity or something. You know, I can't really have my fans downloading weird images, so they make them anyway. <laughs> oh, I've seen it, okay? Jeremy, one of you did some of those? Yeah. What's your favorite line you've ever said in any show? My favorite line I've ever said in any show. Before. Gosh. I have to think about that. 
I'd just be lying if I told you one right now. <clears throat> you know, I really loved singing the Wish Every Day Could Be Christmas song from Fairly Odd Parents. <laughs> Wish Every Day Could Be Christmas. That was kind of fun. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I did love all, everything that Bubbles said too. You know, when she was talking to squirrels or singing. There was one scene where it was like she's talking to squirrels and I was going like this. And Tom Kenny looked at me, he's like, is this how you talk to squirrels? I'm like, I have no idea why. But I guess hardcore. Or when she thought she was going to do it. That was kind of funny. You. Oh, another hard question. <laughs> you know, there's a little of me in everything that I do. <laughs> no, I'm not really like Harley. Um, I'd say I've, I've got a lot of Twily in me and Bubbles and even Batgirl. It's sort of like a mix of those. Not really a ten-year-old boy. But, <laughs> okay, way in the back. Oh, say that again? Do you have any memorable lines that you've never heard because they were left on the heavy work before? There's a lot of them, and I will say if the engineer from the Powerpuff Girls ever wants to get rich, he could sell them because they're naughty. <laughs> <laughs> you. Yeah. Um, if all of your characters were in a burning building, which one would you rest on? <laughs> Way to pick which is my favorite child. <laughs> You're gonna get hurt. <laughs> Just say. Harley's coming out. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, you're involved with the new Shaolin Showdown uh, reboot that's coming up, right? Uh huh. Um, did you have any trouble with sort of like getting back into like old roles that have been like a, a long mm -mm. time ago? Or? I can still do Hello Kitty. Uh, I was 13. Did you say Hello Kitty Spray Tail is proud to present The Wizard of Paws. Holy Pumpkin! It's cool. Showing Shoda. You're wrong. I told you they live up there. They're just without a play. I'm crazy like that. Yes, because we work alone always in video games. There's never like, um, you know, where we get to play off each other because typically there's so many lines in a video game that it would just it would just not be time well time well managed if you have to wait for everyone. There's like there be thousands of lines in a video game. So and it can also be a lot more vocally straining because you know the sessions are broken down into four hours. Sometimes they go quicker, but never more than four hours. So it's just you talking for four hours, even if you're not doing a hundred death screams. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be taxing. Death scenes are not easy. Like we need ten more. And you're like, oh. no, you cannot. Yes. Uh, is there anything you can tell us about your character in the upcoming James Bond movie? Not with children in the room. <laughs> Did you guys get the movie yet? Oh, it's out in LA already. You know, um, I got an email from Kevin Smith saying, hey, you want to do my movie? <laughs> so I said yes. Um, and it was crazy fun. And it's, if you haven't seen it yet, it's not what, you would, what you'd expect from my character. I'll tell you that. And there's bad words, so don't bring your children. Yes. What is the most random thing um, you've ever done in the you... booth? Or... Oh, 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 sorry. Oh, that's okay. I didn't pick you. Sorry. No, I picked sorry, girl. Stand up. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Stand up, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. There you go. What is the most randomest thing you've ever done in the booth or at home? Most randomest thing I've done in the booth. <laughs> I just thought of something that I won't tell you. Say <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, me and Pam C Pamela Siegel Avon, you know her? Yeah. Californication and Bobby from King of the Hill. Yeah. We did some cuckoo stuff. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> Are you waiting for me to tell you what it is? Oh. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Wait, the person who thought it was his turn. Yeah. What do you enjoy the most about Twilight Sparkle? Hmm. I guess that she's cool even though she's an egghead. And she's really real and so many people tell me that they relate to her. And I think the fandom has been the biggest reward to her. I mean, I hear people telling me thank you every single day. And it's just so nice that that show has created a community for people that felt alone before. So I'm just very proud to be a part of that. Yes? Me? So, um, what, what did you think? Uh, so, what, what was your... Um, I forgot my question. Uh-oh! <laughs> yes? Um, since you're... Um, since you can sing so well, why is it that Twilight has a separate singer for her? Is it just because it's harder to sing, to sing your send songs from L.A. It's, to Vancouver? It's just that I'm, yeah, because I'm too far away, and Daniel Ingram is such an amazing, amazing composer, and he's so particular about how he likes it that I have to fly back and forth, and I just okay. can't leave my babies. <laughs> they like me. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. No. Okay, no. Yes. Uh, who do you like better, Diamond Tiara or Silver Spoon? Oh. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> yes. Whatever that white thing you're holding up is. You, you're holding something in your hand. Yeah, you are. Yeah. No, the white one. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What the heck is that? It's a water bottle. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, do you, you ever use your voice acting to pull out like practical jokes on friends, family, or telemarketers? <laughs> In fact, Aiden, have I ever used my voice on telemarketers? Yeah. <laughs> He's actually started joining in on the fun. Whenever people go, hi, is this strong Hello? <laughs> yeah, I'm wondering if you're interested. Hello? <laughs> And I just keep going till they hang up. Like by myself. Um, well, I get booked for four hours, and I can usually knock out sometimes between three and seven episodes. Yeah, I've done a lot. I'm that good. <laughs> I'm the D to the W I L I G H T, and ain't no other pony trolling down like me. I'm Twilight Licious. <laughs> when you first met the Bronies and you first heard about Bronies? When I first met them, I think I got really introduced on Twitter. And then when I met them at a con, I was like blown away because it's the most colorful fandom I've ever seen. <laughs> and I, I don't know, I can't describe why, but it was love at first sight. Like, I get really upset when anyone makes fun of, of them because I think they're like the most adorable fans ever. And you, if you follow me on Twitter, you'd know that they helped me raise over $100,000 for a little girl with a brain tumor. Yeah. I don't know, my first reaction is probably the same as it is. I just love them so much. <laughs> They're just adorable. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if you actually had the chance, but did you work with John Delancey? And if you did, what was it like? Uh, we did not work on the show together, no. Just on the documentary, and he's a doll. I adore him. More than friends, yes? yes? What's your opinion on the spite verse version of Twilight? On the what verse version? The spite verse. Spite verse. Oh, I don't think anyone knows. No one here knows what the spite verse is, really? Really? Oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh, no. oh no. It's what? It's basically where everything's opposite. 
Is that an internet thing? Yes, it's an that internet thing. That scares me. <laughs> Really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hmm, have I ever tweeted anything I regret? I don't think so. Like if I if I did something like that, oh maybe that didn't wasn't worded right and could have hurt someone's feelings, maybe, but not really. I try really hard to just be really lighthearted and fun. And people say like you you brighten my day, you make me smile, I'm like, okay, then that's a job well done. I like making people laugh. If I can make people laugh and go, oh no, she didn't at the end of the day, then I'm happy. <laughs> Is there anything you should think I should not have tweeted? <laughs> okay, good. Yes. Okay. Okay, give it to me. <laughs> Look, presents. <laughs> Timmy used Raven to beat up Biggie, and the second one, what would happen if Bubbles tried to take over the world? <laughs> the world would be awesome! <laughs> I don't understand your only question. You want Timmy to use Raven? Yeah, to get rid of Biggie. Oh. Cool, I wish Raven would kick Biggie's butt. That's all on Metreon. Zintos! <laughs> Bye, Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the truth is, about a year before I worked, I had the audition for Drawn Together, I pitched a show about an animated group of people living together like the real world. And um, I think it was my husband that said that was a dumb idea. <laughs> and then when I saw people, I was like, oh, oh my god, I love these people already. And in the first audition, they wanted me to improvise a song for Clara, and for whatever reason, I made up a song about her being in love with her pet turtle. <laughs> I don't understand it, and I don't remember it, sorry. Um, but I instantly loved it so much. And um, they, they cast me as Clara and Toot, and they still didn't have their foxy love. And um, I did my first animated series with Cree Summer when I was 13. She was the bad cat. She was Catnip in Hello Kitty. And as soon as I saw Foxy, I'm like, that's Cree Summer. <laughs> and they said, no, her audition wasn't really good. I'm like, what? I said, play me that. And her audition was like Elmira. Like it was like a little girl. And like her agents told her the wrong thing. <laughs> you need to bring her back. And so they saw her again and they gave her the direct, right direction. They're like, that's Foxy Love. So Cree's very grateful. <laughs> Dear Princess Celestia, today I met a really cool girl with magical powers just like me. Do you want to write a letter with me to Princess Celestia? No. <laughs> A lot of pressure. And also, at the first session, they told me we don't want you to do an impression of her. And I thought, that's crazy because the fans love her for her voice as well as her drawing. And they said, we just want you to tweak it a little and make it your own. We want your Harley. So, of course, I was so nervous that the fans were going to be like, doesn't sound exactly like her. Or, you know, that because Arlene's so lovable that they wouldn't take to her. So I was very nervous about it. And I also love Arlene. So, and when I found out she was not doing the games, I was, you know, 
obviously very surprised and very nervous about how that would come out. So, yes. <laughs> and I'm very happy that people still love her. <laughs> yes? Is there any famous role that you ever tried for but didn't get? And if so, is, can you give us a demonstration of what you would have made it sound like? No, I get everything I want. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, but I'm not telling you. Yes. <laughs> Either one. Okay. Um, out of all the uh, creative brony content that has been generated uh, to date, what really stands out most for you? Hmm. Well, I will say in general, the art is amazing. The brony community is such an incredible talent of artists. And also so generous with their art. Like, I'll make a joke on Twitter like, Twilight Heart sparkles in an instance it's drawn for me. <laughs> Um, and of course, you know, whenever they do OCs for me, like for me or for Kiki or for my girlfriend, Jen Bricker, who's in a wheelchair, did you guys see that art? Yep. It was amazing. I mean, the girl was born without legs and they drew her. She's so cute. <laughs> um, and this, the music is amazing. I love Living Tombstone. It was so fun to meet him at BronyCon. Um, and um, I don't know, I, it's all amazing, except for some of it on the internet. <laughs> but you know what? That stuff exists in every show I do. So <laughs> it's not new, it's just a little more colorful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the one beside you. Uh, has your ego inflated at all with all this fan love <laughs> from all your shows? <laughs> <sighs> Such a silly question to me. <laughs> I can go so many ways with that and make it funny. But the truth is, like I said, I always knew that that's what I wanted to do. It was in me to be an actress. And I always knew that the lady painting my toes is just as important person as a director. And I never treated people differently. And I don't myself act differently um, because I just think I'm so lucky to have this gift. And people that have met me know that I'm, I'm not, they're, you know, people are like, wow, you're so nice. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't understand because I had people that have changed through their fandom and it's disappointing because you're people and people that got lucky. I think that acting is a lot of timing and right time, right place. And so, no, I haven't changed. And maybe I buy myself nicer things. <laughs> Do you still enjoy having fun with some of your favorite roles? Sure. <laughs> Anyone? Behind you. Hmm. Me? Yeah. Alright, I had to give you something. It was like a gift, so okay. I was wondering if I could come up and give Bring you Bring that up here. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Another question while she's up. Okay, with you. You don't want to ruin your day, but did anyone tell you Twitter's on the internet? <laughs> 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 you ruined everything! <laughs> Just kidding. I love Twitter. So much fun. I love Vine too. You guys follow me on Vine? Anybody see that Mark Hamill Vine? <laughs> yeah. You drew that? Oh, your sister. Wow. Wow, that's so good. I wish you guys could see it, but it's basically all my characters on the necklace. Wow. Woo! Got a request too. <laughs> mm. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Where's my present? Where's my brawny army? Um, so the question was, do I feel like physically connected to the characters or emotionally? Sometimes, I mean, there were moments in Arkham City where I cried, you know. And that would be a spoiler, but I did. So yeah, sometimes it affects me emotionally. Not physically, thank goodness, because I'd be dead a million times over by now. But <laughs> yes. Um, 
Um, I'm the tummy and Ted. <laughs> Did you know that? I love you! <laughs> no, you didn't see that? I do a lot of dolls that you might not know. Like dolls that my kids hate because I buy them all when they're in our house. <laughs> Mom, your voice is so creepy in that doll. You don't like that. Um, I, it's, it's funny because I'd say I do a lot of voices that y'all don't know, but y'all know more than I do, typically. So, probably, I don't know. No, probably not. Um, I would, but they don't, I think it's still a non-union show, they don't hire union performers, and I can't do that, because I work a lot. <laughs> can't give up my gigs for one, stop it. Yeah. Uh, we, I'm pretty sure you got Lauren Faust into, onto Twitter, right? Am I yes, yeah, can you I tell forced her. Can you, tell <laughs> us, can you tell us the story of how that happened? <laughs> First she said no, and then I didn't shut up. <laughs> Um, I think I convinced her in a way that it's so, for me, I feel like the um, voiceover actors before Facebook and Twitter didn't know how the fans felt about them, and it's so rewarding on Twitter to feel all that love, and I said to her, it's nice to give back and, like, interact with your fans, and, you know, they love you so much, it's nice to do that, and then I didn't stop bothering her, and then I actually took her phone. <laughs> we were in the backseat of a car at BronyCon, and I took her phone and made her a Twitter account. Because if she says no, I'll just do it for her. <laughs> um, yeah, I like to force people to do things they don't want to do. <laughs> it's been five years since I've been home. Yeah, it's too long, really. Yeah, it's weird because it doesn't feel like home in certain ways anymore because I've been living in LA for 20 years. It's a long time. Um, it's weird. I mean, it's still my home because it's where I was born and raised, but you know, I went to my home home on Friday with my kids when I arrived and it was just so weird. It's like, I grew up here? It's so weird. I don't know, there's something weird about that. Just weird. Oh, five minutes. You don't have a question. Oh, she's like five minutes. You little girl. <laughs> There's only one little girl. It's you. <laughs> now she's shy. <laughs> Does she want to talk? I'm her mom, and I just want to say as a mom that I really appreciate Twilight Sparkle oh. as a role model for kids. Like if she's going to watch a show over and over, day in and day out. <laughs> yes. At least it's one that's teaching her really good lessons. Oh, do you like the show? What's her name? Julie. Oh, she's so shy. Dear Princess Celestia, today I saw Julie. She's really cute. A little shy. We should be friends. Come to Ponyville. <laughs> There's five minutes left. I think that's a good question. It's not going to make me choose which voice is my favorite. Or who would win in a fight. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, if I never got into voice acting, probably something with animals. I love animals. It's like my dream to have like some big giant sanctuary with like a million animals. And then I could give them all voices. <laughs> 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 And time is expensive in the studio, so when they want you to stop laughing, it makes you laugh even more, especially if you get mad. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so there's been some moments like that where we just laugh a lot and can't stop. And there was one particular episode of Transformers, and the director kept saying things without realizing that had certain innuendos. <laughs> and it was like every time she gave a direction, would be like, can you just fudge your happy kid? <laughs> what? what? I just wanted someone to come in and say a line, or she wanted like, to pull out a rope, and she's like, could you just give me a quick yank? <laughs> Every single direction came out like that. And there were a few more, and that gets worse. And we were crying by the end, and the director still didn't realize. 
Rainbow Dash for her pitch. And of course, um, Pinkie Pie is so much like bubbles that she just assumed that would happen. But once she heard Twilight, she was like, that's my Twilight. So it's such a commanding role that um, it, would, it was smart of them to, to pass off the other roles. And Andrea's like, I can't even imagine it not being her. She does such a fantastic job. I mean, that would have been great too. But um, wrap it up. So this means wrap it up. Okay, you with the, is that, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Are going to see Flash Sentry again? I don't know. <laughs> yes. Do you have a thought of the of the I don't know. Don't ask those questions. I don't know. Yes, you? I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, what was your reaction when you found out Twilight was going to be an album? Oh, what did you think about that? changed our acting at all. Um, I think it's just kind of adorable how she's like learning how to do things now. Um, it's fine because all the characters are the same and it's something new and interesting and it's fine with me. It's fine. Let's check out your feeling. Yes. I see a hand up in the back. No, because the con ends at five. Oh, sorry. You missed it, buddy. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, like when there's a thousand death screams. <laughs> Typically video games. Uh, Final Fantasy was not because I don't like that job, but when I came in, the scripts were like storyboards and like to learn all bed and <laughs> that was a lot of, I was happy to be done just because it was so much work. And when something's that much work, when you're a conscientious actor, you want to give every line your all so that people are drawn to it. So um, <coughs> that, that was good to like, phew. Did that all amazing? Thank you. Yeah. Um, what's it like meeting the other uh, My Little Pony actors every now and again? 
We love each other so much, it's nice to meet the other actors. I've not really ever met a voice actor that I didn't like, but the girls on My Little Pony are extraordinary, so that's always fun to do a uh, con with them. Yeah. Hello Kitty. That was my first series. Who is your favorite singer or music program? And if Twilight's time will come into this world, what would you choose? So many choices. So many choices. So many choices. I'm sorry, what is this on you? No, I refuse to answer that question. Yeah. Only because I don't know. I love all of your work, but how do you deal with criticism of one job to another job? Like they like like a lot of friends that I know they don't really watch my little ponies and they say a lot of things and I'm like it's okay. So how do you deal with that when you go out? I typically ignore anything negative I see on Twitter. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard, sometimes you go, Hey you I'll put the phone away. Because <laughs> um, I think everyone's like so they think they're so powerful behind their computer and I don't like anything mean towards any fandom or myself, so I try to ignore that. I, I hate any, I despise any kind of bullying or anything like that, so. I try to ignore it, but if someone doesn't like something, I don't force them. You must like my little pony, no. You know, everyone likes what they want to like. We have to be done. Wait, before we're done, can um, I videotape everybody singing happy birthday to Aiden? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.